Hi everyone, today we're going through a section of our Math for Teachers book. This is a problem solving approach to mathematics for elementary school teachers. This is for our course called the Real Number System. And this section is not a section that's actually in the textbook. They added it as an online only module. I've called it Section A because they called it Module A, but I don't want us to get confused with our modules that are in Canvas. So this is Chapter 4, Section A. Today we're talking about clock arithmetic. Here we go. So here is a clock face with no hands on it. And let's think about how we add time on a clock. Because the numbers on the face of the clock don't go past 12, we have to use a special kind of arithmetic to calculate time. For example, if you leave your house at 10 a.m. and you drive for five hours, what time will you arrive at your destination? Well, you start here at 10 and you add five hours to that. So 10 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So we started at 10 and we added 5 hours and we end up at 3 o'clock. Now of course you know that it's 3 p.m. now because if we started at 10 a.m. and went 5 hours, now it's p.m. But if you just are looking at the clock, the p.m. and a.m. don't show up on the clock. So the 3 is the position of the hands and really throughout this section, all we're concerned about is the position of the hand. We're really not concerned with AM and PM unless the question specifically asks you that. So I'm just going to say 3 o'clock here. Now this is not normal addition because the answer can never be bigger than 12, but it wouldn't make sense to say 10 plus 5 equals 3. We can't write things like that and just say, oh, we're using clock addition. No, no, no. 10 plus 5 has to be 15, period. So we can't say 10 plus 5 equals 3. So we need a new symbol to show that we're doing clock arithmetic instead of regular addition. And the symbol that we're going to use is a plus symbol with a circle around it. Now this kind of arithmetic where the numbers wrap around like they do on a clock face, this has a special name in mathematics. This is called modular arithmetic. And since 12 is the largest number on the clock, the type of modular arithmetic that we do with a regular clock face is called arithmetic mod 12. See, the 12 tells us what the biggest number is. Now, you can actually do modular arithmetic with any number, but you just wouldn't use a regular clock. So imagine a clock that only had five numbers on its face. This kind of clock would let us do arithmetic mod 5. So all the problems that we are going to do in this section are all going to be mod 12, but just keep in the back of your mind that it doesn't always have to be mod 12. We could do this with other numbers if we needed to. So first, let's practice getting used to this new symbol that we have. We're going to write each problem using our new circle plus symbol, and then we're going to solve the problem. So first, a doctor's prescription says to take a pill every eight hours. If you take the first pill at 7 a.m., what time should you take the next two pills? Okay, so to write this with our circle plus, we'd say 7 circle plus 8. And so, you know, normally 7 plus 8 is 15, but here if we start at 7 and we go 8 hours, of course we won't get to 15 because once we get past 12, we start back around the circle again. So let's just count on the clock face for now. So we start at 7, and we want to add 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 7 circle plus 8 is going to be 3, and of course that's p.m. And now for the second pill, we're starting at 3, and we want to add 8 again. So at 3 o'clock, you take the first pill, and then in 8 more hours, you're going to take the second pill. So 3 circle plus 8, if we start at 3 and we go 8 hours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3 circle plus 8 is 11, still p.m. So here's part B. 
Suppose you are following a bean soup recipe that calls for letting the beans soak for 12 hours. If you begin soaking them at 8 p.m., what time should you take them out? I know that you already know the answer to this, but let's just work through it like we don't already know. Let's write the problem with our circle plus symbol. So we'll say 8 circle plus 12. We're starting at 8 and we're adding 12 hours. Okay, and now let's count it on the clock face. So 8 add 12 hours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 8 circle plus 12 is still 8, but this time it's 8 a.m. But you see, as far as the answer to the question is concerned, 8 circle plus 12 is just 8, and it doesn't really matter whether it's a.m. or p.m. Now, you probably noticed in that last example that adding 12 hours puts us in the same position as adding 0 hours. 8 circle plus 12 is 8, and 8 circle plus 0 is also 8. So that means as far as addition mod 12, adding 12 and adding 0 both have the same effect. Now let's talk about some of the properties of clock arithmetic. And you'll be glad to know that addition in clock arithmetic has a lot of the same properties as addition in regular arithmetic. We do have the commutative property. And you remember the word commutative just means that the add-ins change place. So the commutative property holds for clock addition, and that means that a circle plus b is the same as b circle plus a. Let's take a look at it here on this chart. So if you start with one number and then you add another number to that, you can find the sum on this table by just figuring out where the row and the column intersect. So let's try adding 3 plus 10. Okay, 3 circle plus 10 is 1. So 3 circle plus 10 is 1. And therefore, 10 circle plus 3 should also be 1. You see that? 10 circle plus 3 is also 1. And that would work out for any pair of numbers that you choose. And so addition in clock arithmetic is commutative. We also have the identity property of addition. As long as we're working on a 12-hour clock, adding 12 to any number brings us right back to the same number. So if you start at 3 and you add 12, you get 3. If you start at 7 and you add 12, you get 7. And so adding 12 to any number brings us right back where we started. In other words, again, adding 12 is the same as adding 0. And that means that on a 12-hour clock, 12 is the additive identity. 12 is the number that you can add to anything and not change the value. And then we have the inverse property of addition. Now, for regular numbers, here's the inverse property of addition. It says for every number a, we can find an additive inverse b so that a plus b equals 0. But remember, there's no 0 on a clock face. So when we're talking about arithmetic mod 12, we need to represent the inverse property of addition by saying that a plus b equals 12. Every a has a number b, so that a plus b equals 12. Therefore, unlike integers, the additive inverse is not necessarily a number with the opposite sign. For example, 3 circle plus 9 is 12. So in clock arithmetic, that means 3 and 9 are additive inverses. And look here at all of these numbers that add up to 12. So the additive inverse of 10 in clock arithmetic, mod 12, is going to be 2. And the additive inverse of 5 in clock arithmetic, mod 12, is going to be 7, because 5 plus 7 equals 12. So any two numbers from the clock that add up to 12 are additive inverses. Now let's practice finding additive inverses for a few numbers. So here's 8. And the additive inverse for 8 is going to be whatever it takes to add to 8 that would make you get a total of 12. So 8 plus 4 is 12. So let's check it out. If you start at 8 and you go 4 more, 1, 2, 3, 4, see you end up at 12. So 8 and 4 are additive inverses. The additive inverse of 5 will be 7 because 5 plus 7 is 12. And the additive inverse of 1 will be 11. 
because if we start at 1 and we add 11, we get to 12. Now, you can imagine that if we had to do all of our clock addition by counting on the clock, things could get really tedious and complicated. So there is an easier way to do this. Since we are going to be performing addition mod 12, in other words, since we're using a 12-hour clock, all we have to do is add our two numbers with a regular plus sign and then divide that answer by 12. The remainder of the division is what will be important to us. The remainder is going to be the answer. The quotient is not important here because the quotient will only tell you how many times you went all the way around the clock, and that's not important. What's important is where you stop, so that's what the remainder tells us. Notice that since we're dividing by 12, the remainder is always going to have to be a number between 1 and 12 inclusive, and so the answer to any mod 12 arithmetic problem is always between 1 and 12 inclusive. We never leave a negative answer as our answer to a mod 12 problem, and we never leave a number greater than 12. Okay, here is example two. We're going to go through this together. And I've put a clock face for us here just so we can use it when the numbers are small, just to check out that things are working the way we think they ought to. But I hope that by the time we get over here to these problems that have larger numbers, that you will not want to count on the clock face because that would be a really hard way to do these problems with large numbers. So let's start with six circle plus seven. Now remember the circle plus tells us that we're working on the clock face. So in order to do 6 circle plus 7, we're going to need to take the circle off and just think about 6 plus 7, which is 13. Now 13 is too big to be our answer. You can tell because there's no 13 on the clock face. So we'll divide this number by 12. 12 will go into 13 one time with 1 left over. The one that is the quotient is not important at all. That just means that you go all the way around the clock one time. What's important is the remainder, which is 1. And so 6 circle plus 7 is 1. Now let's verify that by counting on the clock. So if we start at 6 and we add 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then we stop at 1. And so you can see that the answer has to be 1. Now let's think about 9 circle plus 14. So to think about this problem, we'll take the circle off, and we'll just think about 9 plus 14, which adds up to 23. And now this number is bigger than 12, so we need to divide 12 into it and find out what the remainder is. 12 will go into 23 one time with 11 left over. So 9 circle plus 14 is 11. And let's check that out on the clock face. So if we start here at 9 and we add 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 gets us back to 9. And then 13, 14, we stop at 11, you see. Okay, now let's look at part C. Here we have 15 circle plus 58. And we certainly can't start at 15 in the first place but also we wouldn't want to have to add 58 because that would really just be slow and aggravating. So let's take the circle off. Let's do 15 plus 58. That's going to add up to 73. Now we want to divide 12 into this number. So 12 into 73 says that 12 goes in six times with one left over. And so 15 circle plus 58 is 1. And now let's do 3 circle plus 24. So 3 plus 24 is 27. And then we need to divide 12 into 27. So 12 will go into 27 twice with 3 left over. And so 3 circle plus 24 is 3. Now this should not surprise you because adding 24 is just like adding 12 twice. So if we start at 3 and we go all the way around the circle twice, then of course we end up back at 3. You know that from just everyday life. If it's 3 o'clock and I tell you meet me back here in 24 hours, it will be 3 o'clock again when we meet the next day. Now, I wanted to take you through this method one time because I wanted you to see 
what role division plays when we're doing arithmetic mod 12. However, I do want you to notice that since we don't care anything about the quotient and we only care about the remainder, we don't have to do this by division. It would be easier in most cases to adjust our problem by adding and subtracting multiples of 12. For example, look here. Instead of adding 14, which sent me all the way around the circle and then plus 2, wouldn't it have been easier to just recognize that if I take 12 away from this, all that's left is 2? And then I wouldn't have had to count all the way around the circle. So this is the habit that I want you to get into, and let's look at that on the next slide. So we're going to go through these same problems again, but just using an easier method that does not involve division. So this says evaluate each of the following mod 12. And here again we have 6, circle plus 7. And notice that neither one of these numbers is greater than 12, so I won't need to operate on these numbers. I'm just going to go ahead and do the addition the way we did before. So without the circle, 6 plus 7 is 13. Now instead of actually doing the division, because I don't care about the quotient, what I'm going to do is just subtract 12. So 13 minus 12 is 1, and therefore 6 circle plus 7 is 1. And let's look at part B. Here we have 9 circle plus 14. So like I said before, we can adjust this 14 by taking away 12, and that lets us restate the problem as 9 circle plus 2. See, because if you start at the top of the clock and you add 14, you will end up at 2. So 2 and 14 have the same effect in mod 12 addition. So it's perfectly legal for us to restate our problem this way. And now this answer is going to come out less than 12, so we don't even have to write it without the circle. 9 circle plus 2 is 11, and therefore 9 circle plus 14 is 11. Now let's look at part C. Here we have 15 circle plus 58. And notice that both of these numbers are bigger than 12. So what I'm going to do is take off the largest multiple of 12 that I can without creating a negative number. And it's not that there's really anything wrong with negative numbers, it's just that we haven't looked at them yet. So I just want to stay positive for right now. So let's go ahead and from this first number subtract 12. And from this second number let's subtract 48. And that's going to give us 3 for the first number. 15 minus 12 is 3. Circle plus 58 minus 48 is 10. So now we have transformed our problem into 3 circle plus 10. And if we take the circle away, then we can say that 3 plus 10 is 13, and 13 minus 12 is 1. So that means that 15 circle plus 58 is 1, and that agrees with what we found using the method on the previous slide. And now let's look at 3 circle plus 24. So 24 is a multiple of 12. So if we just subtract 24, that leaves us with 3 circle plus 0, which of course is 3. Once you get the hang of it, do you see how much easier it is to do it this way than it would be to slog through the division every time? So once you understand what's going on with the clock arithmetic and that you don't care about the quotient, all you care about is the remainder, you find out that you can get that remainder by adjusting the problem and adjusting the answer by adding and subtracting multiples of 12. Now let's talk about negatives. So if your problem contains negatives, then you can just add with them using the integer rules that you already know. But you can also turn them into positives by adding multiples of 12. Remember, on a 12-hour clock, 12 is the additive identity. So adding 12 or any multiple of 12, like we just saw on the last slide, will not change the answer. So let's go through example 3 together. And this one is very similar to example 2, except that now we have negatives involved. So I'm going to use the methods that I showed you the second time we went through example 2. And whenever it's convenient or necessary, I'm going to adjust my problem by adding multiples of 12. Now here on part A, we have negative 4 circle plus 10. And negative 4 plus 10 is positive 6, and that is a valid answer for us. So I really don't feel like it's necessary to do any adjusting here. 
we'll just say negative 4 circle plus 10 is 6, and that's fine. Now when we look at part B, we have two negative numbers. And of course, if you add negative 11 and negative 19, you're going to end up with a large negative number. And so I would like to avoid that. So what I want to do here is just add 12 to the first number, and the second number, negative 19, to make this positive, I'll have to add 24. And let's see what we get there. Negative 11 plus 12 gives us 1 for the first number. Then circle plus. Negative 19 plus 24 gives us 5 for the second number. And 1 circle plus 5 is 6. And that means that negative 11 circle plus negative 19 is 6. Now in part C, we have 5 circle plus negative 40. Now I don't want to have to deal with this negative 40, so I'm going to add a multiple of 12 big enough to change this into a positive number. So if I add 48 there, I can have my new problem stated as 5 circle plus 8. And now if I add these two numbers, I'm going to come up with something bigger than 12. So let's do it without the circle. So 5 plus 8 is 13, and then take away 12 from that. 13 minus 12 is 1. And that means that 5 circle plus negative 40 is 1. Or let me just show you an alternate way to work this problem. Instead of adding 48, what we could have done is just add 36. Now that's not enough to make this number turn positive, but watch what happens. Negative 40 plus 36 is negative 4. So now I end up with 5 plus negative 4. And we know from adding integers that 5 plus negative 4 would also be 1. So either way you would like to do this is fine. And now let's look at part D. So here we have a negative in front of a pair of parentheses, and we have the problem inside the parentheses, 20 circle plus 5. So according to operations, what we should do first is evaluate inside the parentheses, and then we apply the negative. So that's what I'm going to do. This 20 is larger than 12, so I'm going to subtract 12 and rewrite my problem as negative parentheses 8 circle plus 5, because 20 minus 12 is 8. Now, 8 plus 5 is 13, as we saw before, and 13 minus 12 is 1. So at this point, the inside of my parentheses has been evaluated at 1. So I have negative 1. But I can't leave the answer to a mod 12 problem as a negative. So what I need to do is take this negative 1 and add 12 to it, and that will give us 11. So the negative of 20 circle plus 5 is 11. And now let's talk about clock subtraction. Now we know from adding integers that subtraction means adding the opposite. And that will work here, but keep in mind that it's always best to restate the numbers in the smallest convenient form to keep from having to divide 12 into large numbers. And also keep in mind that you really don't have to do the division anyway, as we saw in the last two examples. It's only the remainder that matters. So you can also get to the number you need by adding or subtracting multiples of 12 until you get a number that's visible on the clock face. And don't forget, in mod 12 arithmetic, you must end with a number between 1 and 12 inclusive. In other words, you must end with an answer that's visible on the clock face. So here in example 4, what we're going to do is restate each of these problems in a simpler form and then evaluate mod 12. So here in part A, we have 3 circle minus 11. Now, I would like for us to restate this in an addition form. So you remember how we did that with integers. You change minus to plus, and you change the sign of the next number. And so that's what we're going to do here. 3 circle plus negative 11. And now we can use our trick of adding a multiple of 12 to this number so that we end up with something positive. So I'm just going to add 12, and then negative 11 plus 12 is going to give us 1. So now our problem has been restated as 3 circle plus 1, which we know is 4, and that means 3 circle minus 11 is 4. Now I'd like to show that to you on the clock face. So minus means that we go counterclockwise. So if we start at 3 and we go counterclockwise 11, then we're going to do this. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, and you can see that we end up at 4. Now let's look at part B. So here we have 17, circle minus 33. Now we could go ahead and restate this as addition, but before we do that, let's go ahead and adjust both of these numbers so that they're somewhere between 1 and 12. We'll start by taking 12 off of this 17, and let's go ahead and take 36 off of this 33. Now, you're going to say, wait a minute, if we take 36 off, it's going to make that number turn negative. But that's okay. And notice that if we had a negative here, we would be able to say minus negative, and that would be plus. So instead of saying minus 24 here, I went ahead and said minus 36, and I'm okay with that negative number because 36 is very close to 33. So it's going to be a very small negative number. Okay, so let's see what happens. 17 minus 12 gives us 5, and then we have our circle minus. 33 minus 36 gives us negative 3. Okay, now minus negative makes plus. So now we can rewrite our problem as 5 circle plus 3, which is just 8. So that worked out great. And therefore, the answer to our original problem, 17 circle minus 33, is also 8. Okay, part C. Here we have negative 15 minus negative 8. Now, I don't really want to do any adjusting on this second number because I already can see that minus negative is going to let me rewrite this as plus 8. But I do want to add something here so that I end up with a positive number. So let's add 24 here, which is going to let us restate this as 9. Then we have minus negative 8, so we'll rewrite that as circle plus 8. So now we have 9 circle plus 8. And we know that 9 plus 8 is 17. And we know that 17 minus 12 is 5. So now we know that negative 15 circle minus negative 8 is 5. Or here's an alternate way you could approach this problem. Instead of adding 24, you could choose to just add 12. And I like that idea because negative 15 plus 12 is still negative, but it's a really small negative number. So that gives us negative 3 minus negative 8, which we know is plus 8. So now we have negative 3 circle plus 8, and that just directly adds up to 5 without us having to do an extra subtraction step. So by being careful about what we added here, it saved us a step at the end. Either way is fine, though. And now let's look at part D. So here we have negative 46 minus negative 29. What I'm going to do here is just add the closest multiple of 12 that I can, and I'm not too worried, again, about making this number come out positive because I know that minus negative would make a positive anyway. So let's go ahead and add 48 to this first number, and let's just add 24 to this second number. Now negative 46 plus 48 adds up to 2. And then we have our circle minus. Negative 29 plus 24 adds up to negative 5. And now minus negative 5 becomes plus. So we can write 2 circle plus 5, and that just adds up to 7. So now we know that negative 46 circle minus negative 29 is 7. And now let's think for just a minute about clock multiplication. And you know that we have modeled multiplication before as repeated addition, so that's not a surprise. And the multiplication rules you already know still work. All your sign rules still work. And again, to make the problems easier for you, it's best to make all the numbers as small as possible by adding or subtracting multiples of 12 as needed. So let's practice a little bit. So here we have 5 circle times 11. Now we know 5 times 11 is 55, and we know that we can subtract 48 from that because that's a multiple of 12, and 55 minus 48 gives us 7. So now we know 5 circle times 11 is 7. Now I would just like to quickly model this on the clock face. We won't do this every time, but I think it'll be helpful here. So what this means is that we're going 5 hours 11 times, and we want to see where we end up. We should end up at 7. 
So if we start at 12, which is like 0, and we go 5, that will put us here. 5 more puts us here. If we go 5 again, we end up here. And then 3 plus 5 puts us at 8. And then if we go a fifth time, we end up at 1. Go a sixth time, we end up at 6. And then a seventh time, eighth time, ninth time, tenth time, and the eleventh time, if we add 5, we end up at 7. So you can see how multiplication works, but you would not want to have to trace around the clock to do that. You just want to take advantage of your multiplication times table that you already understand. Let's look at part B. So here we have negative 3 circle times 6. So we'll just think about without the circle, negative 3 times 6 would be negative 18. And all we have to do is figure out what this is equivalent to mod 12. So what we'll do is we'll add 24 because that is a big enough multiple of 12 to get us to a positive number. And negative 18 plus 12 is 6. And one more time, let's go to the clock face and see what this looks like. So negative 3 would be going backwards 3 hours each time. And we have to do that 6 times. So if we start here and we go backwards 3 hours at a time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you see that we end up at 6. So negative 3 circle times 6 is 6. And now let's look at part C. So we have negative 9 circle times negative 7. And we're just going to do this directly the way it's written. So you know that negative 9 times negative 7 is positive 63. And now let's take off the biggest multiple of 12 that will leave us with a positive number. So we're going to do 63 minus 60, and that leaves us with 3. So the answer to the problem is 3. But let's look at another method. So if we did want to convert these to positive numbers, we could add 12 to each of these. So negative 9 plus 12 would be 3, and negative 7 plus 12 would be 5. So we've transformed our original problem now into 3 circle times 5. And 3 times 5, of course, is 15. And then if you subtract 12 from that, you get 3. So either way that you like to approach it is fine. They both give the same answer. And that's it for us with clock arithmetic. We looked at addition, subtraction, and multiplication. It may be something a little new and different for you, but it's really not hard. So I hope that you'll give it a chance. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, be sure and ask your instructor.